107.5 WBLS, your number one source for R&B. 360 degrees of power just stepped through the door. <laughs> Please give it up for my sister, Soldier. Let me tell you something. Peace and greetings. Peace and greetings, Thank girl. you for the intro. That was so powerful. I didn't even know you were talking about <laughs> oh, me. Oh, honey, please. You no. Know, <laughs> you know, I have connected with you for many, many years. Um, if you look on the BLS website and you see where they asked me what my favorite book was, mm. you'll see it says Coldest Winter Ever. All right. And that's because I so connected with that. It was like you had a clear view into my hood. Mm. You know, all those people, Ricky and Portia and Bullet and Midnight, uh, and Winter. Winter. Yes. <laughs> I knew all Can't of those people. Can't forget her. She's yeah. the main one. Amazing. You know, and I was so happy to hear that Coldest Winter Ever had some interest, gotten some interest from Jada mm. and Will, and it yes. was going to become a movie. What happened? Okay, wow. I feel like everywhere I go, everybody asks me this <laughs> question, and I understand but back in uh, maybe 2000, we had a deal with mm -hmm. HBO. Right. Uh, and it was going to be a, a film that HBO was going to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, the administration at HBO changed, and a new guy came in. You know, it's like getting a new president of the right. United States, right. you know, out with the old, in with the new. Yeah. So the new guy didn't pick up on the project, okay. but the old guy did. So I had to actually buy that script back from HBO uh, okay. to, to maintain my control over the rights. And luckily for me, you know, I didn't take the uh, payment and go buy myself a big stupid duper right. chain. Because <laughs> <laughs> back then we would have. Oh, right, and all know? kinds of other foolishness. Exactly. And luckily it was right in the bank and I took the money up and said, listen, give me my joint back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know what? You have had a love affair with Midnight you have just carried him. Is this the same Midnight from Coldest Winter Ever? Same guy. Same Midnight, same huh? Same guy. Wow. He must be how old is Midnight now? Gotta well, be a you good... know what? In each <laughs> novel, he's a different age. Okay. Because uh, what I did was after the Coldest Winter, right. I went to telling Midnight Story, and the first one was Midnight Against the Love Story. Right. I so a lot that. of the Coldest Winter Ever fans say, okay, why is he so young? Okay, here's the difference. In The Coldest Winter Ever, we're hearing Winter's story. story. And she's telling it. Got it. In Midnight Against the Love Story. Right. It's his story. It's his story, right. and he's telling it. So where do we start a story? In the in the beginning. Right, exactly. <laughs> so that's what we did. And then we came out with Midnight 2, which was Midnight in the Meaning of Love. And now, today, in stores, as of yesterday, Yay! a moment of silence, Midnight 3. But this one right here is the thunder. That's what I call it, the thunder. Now, well, it says here, I, I and I quote, Sister Soldier's storytelling highlights and ignites the ongoing struggle of young men worldwide to more than survive, but to live strong, to earn, to have the right to love and protect their families, to receive justice and be free. You have always, always been an advocate for Black Lives Matter. You know, Absolutely. our lives mattered long Absolutely. before this uh, movement came right. along. And you have spoken so strongly. Is, is this book, when you were writing it, was this like pre-Trayvon Martin or post? What, were you writing this book in the moment? Oh, this was before the Trayvon Martin execution. Mm. Um, I've uh, These books and this series I've had in my head and in my imagination for a long time. Right. So if you read The Coldest Winter Ever and you read Midnight Against the Love Story, you know the context is the same. It's just that the young people in 2015 are surprised at all of these things that are going on now right. with the police and with the injustice and, and with us not having equal protection under the law, mm -hmm. which is part of the American Constitution <laughs> and all of the amendments, uh -huh. uh, they're surprised by that. But you know what? In the late 80s and early 90s, we knew the names of the people who had been executed by heart. We knew the grandmother, Eleanor Bumpers. Mm -hmm. We knew Amadou Diallo, who just went in his pocket to pull out his, his wallet ID. and got mm -hmm. executed in the doorway. Yeah. We knew Michael Stewart, the graffiti artist, Yusef Hawkins, Michael Griffith, Howard Beach. I mean, we were enraged and on fire about all of these things that were going on. 
And more than being enraged, we were organizing and building a network and a coalition uh, and trying to defend ourselves from this situation. Right. For the young people, you know, I think a lot of us as parents, because I'm a parent now and mm -hmm. I'm older now, we try to protect our young people from that harsh reality that we experienced ourselves. Absolutely. A lot of them grew up more comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. not necessarily, you know, wealthy, but more comfortable than we mm -hmm. ever did. Right. So this is shocking now. Like, are you really tripping? Are you really shooting people without even, you know, identifying yourself because right. the car broke down on the side of the road? It's hard for them to, to believe it, to process it, and to accept it. And nor should they accept it. Exactly. Now, you you said that you wrote The Coldest Winter Ever because we lived in a cold era then. Mm -hmm. How much do you think it has really changed? Oh, it's much colder now. Yeah. <laughs> I always yeah. say we got more stuff and less love. Mm -hmm. You know, we got nicer cars, and some of us got uh, uh, out of the projects and into our houses in mm -hmm. the suburbs, but less love, less family cohesion. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's gotten much, much colder. And, you know, and even especially that neighborhood unit, you know, like the village. You know, exactly. we've lost the village. Well, now I think people think of their village as uh, existing in some digital cyberspace. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> as long as you're facing your, your computer screen, you think you're part of some kind of a village. Look, I'm on Facebook. I, I got 27,000 likes. You right. Know? <laughs> or friends. And they really think or, that these people are friends. Exactly. Yeah. So the definition of these really deep things like friends and friendship and love and relationships and marriage and right. family, you know, is, is we're losing a grip on that. Yeah. So uh, what does midnight experience in a moment of silence? Well, I'm not going to give you the whole plot. Not because, the whole. I mean, just the thrill, give me some, though. The yeah, thrill I need a little of some. the thriller <laughs> is reading it for yourself. <laughs> so go to the store and pick it up. But anyway, uh, actually, this character as a young man was somebody who was very focused on defending, protecting, and building around his family, and, mm -hmm. and particularly around his mother. They started a business, his mother and himself, mm -hmm. when he was young, and they were able to accumulate over the years enough money to buy their own house. Okay. And so he has ongoing businesses as a young man, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he married as a young man. And uh, in this situation was the first time that he loses his cool. Right. He loses his cool, and in a moment of rage, his whole life, which had been so well organized mm -hmm. and so well planned and plotted out and executed, his whole life gets thrown into a very dark world of guns and violence and prisons and cops and COs and, you know, all kinds of situations. It's not until he his hands are cuffed and his ankles are cuffed, mm. and there's a chain connecting his ankles to his wrists, right. and he's chained to the to the man that's chained to the next man, mm -hmm. and there's a whole row of them, mm. and he's sitting on that bench after being in the tombs at the courthouse, mm -hmm. and he's like, damn, I never thought about the concept of brotherhood. Mm. I'm chained to these guys. I don't know these guys. I don't love these guys. These guys don't love me. I don't respect them. They don't respect me, but we in the same situation. Right. So okay. now what? Mm. So it's a very uh, action-packed uh, story, but it's a thriller, and at the same time, uh, it's it's a love story. So mm. you know, you know, you had a platform last night in uh, Newark. Yes, and uh, we know all the things that's been happening in Newark. Um, if those young brothers are listening right now, because this is a, a larger platform, um, if you could speak to those brothers right now. Um, what would you say? I would say part of being a hustler is to be able to recognize your opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now you have uh, an incredible mayor. You know, right now you have your own your own blood, your own people in that seat. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's not a snob and not bourgeois, well educated, still down to earth, loves the people, loves his mama, loves his family, and and loves Newark and wants to see a change there. Right. So now. Even if you were one way before, living one way before, you're supposed to be smart enough, wise enough, deep enough, slick enough 
to recognize you got a different opportunity right. now to, 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 you know, straighten up the situation and become part of the community fabric mm -hmm. in Newark, New Jersey and build rather than destroy. Right. This is an opportunity. So yeah. I hope that, you know, brothers can uh, wake up and peep that. Mm. Sister Soldier, who has always been a source of knowledge, so I'm not surprised that you're going to be at the Source of Knowledge bookstore and you'll be back in Newark tonight, uh, 867 Broad Street. What time is that going to be? 6 p.m. Okay, and that's going to be a little bit more interactive, so you can come on out and, and maybe a Q&A as at, well? Oh, no doubt. Listen, I love to meet the readers. Mm -hmm. I love to hear what the readers think. It doesn't matter to me if somebody disagrees with me or debates with me or anything. I just find all of that to just be, you know, Motivating. so, so real and like, energetic. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I love you and I love right. your attitude. And and even if you like, I don't like this book, but I like that book that you wrote, whatever. Look, if you are reading mm. and feeling and your soul is moving and it's making you think and your life is changing for the better, mm -hmm. I'm like, it's all good. Who are you most like in this book? Oh, Who, that's what? a good question. Ah! <laughs> I think... Um, I think there's a piece of myself in all of my characters, the good ones and the bad ones, the, <laughs> the good moments and the bad moments. You right. Know? So I, there's not one character in there that encompasses a little bit more of who Sister Soldier is now. I have a, a female character. Her name is Chiasa. And um, when I was her age, right she would more remind me of myself. myself. Oh. You know, I wasn't a ninja or martial artist like she was, right. but just somebody, you know, quick, sharp, uh, confident, but, you know, still a little modest and laid back and humble, mm -hmm. you know, and her beauty doesn't come from, uh, you know, Revlon or her beauty doesn't, her beauty co comes from her soul and I probably identify with her most heavily. Well, you are definitely a ninja when it comes to lyrics and <laughs> and spoken word and, and being quick witted as well as uh well versed Thank when it comes to much. dealing that's, with that's with nice issues that concern us so um please come out and see sister soldier she's going to be once again at the soul i mean source of knowledge bookstore 867 broad street for a reading, maybe, and Q&A, &A and a, reading, just a lot of interactive Let's just get love. together and talk like we used to do. Right. <laughs> and you know what? And let's say somebody can't make it. Right. Uh, can they go to SisterSoldier.com or Absolutely. something? Absolutely. Okay. If you can't make it, go to SisterSoldier.com, click on Book Tour, and you'll find out when I'm in New York again, when I'm in New Jersey again, and how you can um, pick up at another book signing site. Now spell I'll, it for them because some people might have forgot how to spell. Well, you know how to spell sister. That's because there have been some people jacking my name, but that's <laughs> that's another show. Right. <laughs> I am sister as right. in S-I-S-T-E-R. Uh-huh. Not sister. <laughs> I'm sister. Soul ja. <laughs> S-O-U-L, which means soul and ja. Right. J-A-H. You all know what all that right. means. Break it down for them, though. Sister Break it down. soul ja. Right. Soul means? The essence of. And ja means? One word for God. There you go. Sister soldier fighting to bring back the essence of God Ooh, in us. You better talk about it, girl. <laughs> Join her tonight once again, Source of Knowledge, Bookstore, 867 Broad Street. Always a pleasure.